Hi, everybody. We're here in San Antonio, Texas today. We are here promoting the uh, film industry. I'm here with, I'm Francois La Rosa. I'm here with Philip Nelson. Hello, Philip. Thanks for having me. It's good to hang out with you guys. Yeah, uh, we're glad to have you. And David Yanez. Hey, everybody. And so, um, Philip, one of the key things is that we're uh, hooking up today to uh, not only talk about the Alamo City uh, Film Festival 2022 with me and David, but also the uh, Al uh, the 48 hour film project. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm just going to give you a shameless plug for the 48 because yeah, the 48 good. hour film project is a very unique film festival and project <clears throat> because you know, a lot of filmmakers, they, especially indie filmmakers, they just kind of do it at, they create a film at their own schedule. When it gets done, it gets done. But on the 48 hour film project, filmmakers come together on a Friday night at six o'clock. They are given a random topic, yeah. two random topics for their film, a character they have to use in the film, a prop they have to use in the film, and a line of dialogue. They go away, write their film, shoot their film, edit their film, and deliver their finished short film by Sunday yeah. at six o'clock. Yeah, and, nice. and so, it, it, and what's really, the, my favorite thing about it is people that enter this film project are not necessarily full-time filmmakers. It's people that want to be part of community, they want to get involved in film, yeah. and they want to just complete something. And you know, at, at the kickoff event, I always tell them, I was like, this is like, a, is like running a marathon. <laughs> In a way, just finishing your film and delivering a film on time is the win. You, you're in, you made the yeah, deadline. Right. It's like marathon. Yeah. I mean, only one person wins a marathon. Everybody puts those stickers on their car that they did it. You know? <laughs> That's right. And, right. and so that, this is it. It's a marathon of film because that's yeah. literally 48 hours from concept to completion. Yeah, you know, for, for new filmmakers or people getting into that uh, area, it's like being thrown in the pool, you know? Oh, it's, it's just, it's absolutely, uh, I've, I've done film and uh, uh, it's, it's a much slower pace and I can uh, evaluate, you know, whether to go left or right and take my time and, and discuss and, but uh, 48 hours, wow, man, that's like, that's warp speed. You know, yeah. the craziest cool part of this is if you win in San Antonio, then you get to go to a national competition oh, called good. Filmapalooza, yeah. which is in DC and it takes place usually around March. Right. And so the winners in all the cities all over the world come together and compete in North America. And then the winners at Filmapalooza actually get to go to Cannes Film Festival. Oh, wow. So, okay. so right. and, and yeah. there have been multiple teams from San Antonio or multiple films from yeah. San Antonio that have made it all the way to Cannes. Oh, that's great. And so yeah. it is, you know, one of my passions of re the reason I took over um, the 48 hour film project. Sarah Beth Fox is a longtime friend. She's been producer of it for years. Yes. She's done Sarah an Beth. amazing job of building this community. Yeah. And she asked me if I would, you know, she asked me to be a judge first. And that's the way they get you in. Right, right. You know, <laughs> it's like we judge. And so for a few years, I was a judge. And then right, she was like, yeah. you know what? I really think you should take this over. And I'm like, huh? And so I did right. it. Yeah. And that was last year. It was last year. In right. 2021, yeah. I, I took over as the San Antonio producer. And you know, it, it was coming out of COVID. You know, yes. we didn't know oh, how yeah, many yeah, teams yeah. we yeah. would have, and we had a great, uh, a great group that came in. But you know, the the main, the thing I love about the 48 is it just builds community. You know, I, I'm a huge fan of San Antonio. I've lived here for a long time, and when people think of creative communities, they think of Austin. You know, film Austin film community is very unified. Los Angeles, Nashville, you know, New York. Miami, there's all these communities, but San Antonio, I think, has as much talent as any of those markets, any of those communities, but we're a very siloed group. Everybody's just kind of in their lane, doing their thing, right. yeah, and we're not a unified front That's in correct. this creative community. That's correct. And it's not just filmmakers, it's artists, it's writers, it's it's all, you know, actresses, actors. We have yeah. an independent viewpoint that it, we're gonna reach the I'm just gonna right. go do it myself. That's and, right, with my resources and yep. attack, but it, uh, if you collaborate, then you can have other dimensions of support because we can't all make it by ourselves. It's true, you know, yeah, it's cliche true. to say the rising tide floats all boats, but it does. <laughs> that's right. You know, if we all yeah. pull each other up, 
we all win and then that's San right. Antonio as a community, as a creative community right. wins. Right. And so, you know, that's really why I said yes to the 48 hour film project because it's not something that makes you money. Yeah. You know, if I cover my costs, then I am so thrilled. If not, <laughs> it's, an, it's an investment in San Antonio. Yeah. But yeah, it was a great, great, uh, 2021 was a great year. We didn't, we had, I think we had like 18 to 20 teams. Yeah. But my favorite story is this, this guy calls me and was like, I don't know anything about the 48. Can I just come to the kickoff event to kind of learn about it? And he comes to the kickoff event and was like, I want to sign up. And he, he basically had no team. Wow. He was a one person team. <laughs> And he yeah. wrote a film, played every part in the film, cool. edited the film, and delivered it, and made a movie poster in That's 48 nice. hours. That's nice. And it was called Rick, and it was so trippy. And he, he would shoot, he had lockdown shots where he would act the act, first actors, and then he would composite it together. <laughs> and and it, it was so, but I mean, yeah. to me, it's that, that is a victory. That is, and we gave him a special judges award called right, the Lone good. Wolf Award. Yeah, that's well, you know, yeah. community. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I started the Alamo City Film Society Film Festival in 2010. Is uh, we have to develop. We have to bring people together. They like a nice party, nice VIP party. I had my training at uh, with the Guadalupe uh, Cultural Center with, with helping with Cinefestival. But then when you don't have full control with the board, it's kind of difficult. So I started my own. And that's why we're able to bring in Francois as the festival director for last year and this year, and then Philip, and we're here to give her guiding support to push the 40-hour film project to San Antonio and beyond. You know, we all build each other up it's and true. the community wins. Yeah. Because we need to, San Antonio needs to get noticed outside of San Antonio. That's because right. if you look at some of the films that have been made here over the years, before it was, you know, even cities were pushing you know, film, you know, other than LA and New York, you know, yeah, we have so many great France, movies, great yeah. TV shows, right. great and locations that are underdeveloped. Have yeah, that's a true in statement, and that's one of the things as a filmmaker that I really enjoy. I've shot two films here in San Antonio. I've done uh, uh, pilots, and uh, I was just called in to direct. And the locations here are still untapped. Yes, yes. That's right. we've got a lot of different places that have really good ambiance. Looks great on film, but it, there's still a lot of untapped resources. And um, also some of the crew here is really talented as well too. Uh, under-recognized. Under-recognized. We're the number one tourist city in yeah. Texas, but yet our film community and film production is not as solid with all our locations. We're still under-recognized. You know, the funny thing about that is there's, like you said, there's so many talented people and they leave San Antonio to work. I mean, I, I don't know if you know this, but I produced the Miss USA pageant in 2020. Yeah, yeah. And I produced the broad, I was broadcast producer for Miss Universe as well. You know, I didn't do that in San Antonio. It yes, was the first right, time, yeah. I think it's yeah. the time that the producer of the broadcast has been out of Texas. Oh wow, that might you know, be true, yeah. And you know, with half a billion people watching, yes. it was a lot of pressure. That's but then, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, like audio guys, they're traveling around all over the country working, right, but they yeah. call San Antonio home. And you know, it will be nice when, you know, we can stay as busy in our hometown as they do sure. having to travel to LA or right, Washington yeah. DC or wherever they're going. Yeah, it's definitely uh, some place that I really enjoy. Uh, I think coming on on board as a, the director of the Alamo City Film Festival, uh, I've really I got to see a little bit more and understand a little bit more about San Antonio and the film industry itself, along with actors, which there's some good quality actors here that come to Austin. Yeah. And uh, I cast them, you know. Um, but there's, you know, I think there's a good couple of casting agents here that uh, they do cast people here, but they also outsource for other um, commercials mm -hmm. or small, in, uh, I mean, well, let's just say independent films outside mm -hmm. of San Antonio, when San Antonio really has the the um, capacity to do a feature, more featured films here. And even if you're just, I think a good thing about the 48 hour project is that it, you know, when you're putting, getting a team like that from, you know, a diverse team together and they do a project that turns out okay or well, um, from there, they can develop it into something even more than that, you know. And I yes. think imagination the, becomes reality. imagination becomes reality. You give yeah. them the opportunity yeah. because people have. I want to be an actor. I've done some acting myself and uh, writing, but they want the opportunity. If the opportunity is not there. 
you know, build a bridge halfway. Well, we'll build our bridge, but they can meet yeah. the other 50%. They'll it's kind of a happen. launching pad is yes, what it it's is. it's a beginning to <coughs> yeah. other folks with the same like-minded attitude. Right, yeah. Film is important. Yeah, it's and an I, I think one of the things that we're here today is to um, bring out more awareness, you know, the resources, and as well as San Antonio um, taking the reins. And, you know, we're, we're probably the conduit. I'm sure there's other people out there that are trying to help in this area, you know. And we have to unite our energy to support the 48-hour film project. This is the newest one coming out yeah. post-COVID, and we have to get that energy going to help Philip and make expand and support that team, and you have our support all as much as we can, we, and then we'll keep going. It, it is amazing, and you know, the cool thing is, is the people that are competing in the 48, they want to do something more, right? You know, yes. and so that's why it's great. Like with with y'all's festival yes. and other, you know, just all it's it's community building. Yeah. You know, that's the key: is we all build each other up, we promote each other's work, we highlight the excellence that people bring to the table. Refine the craft and continue on. There's other opportunities. Yeah. Don't just stop. Oh, Begin that's and continue great. and continue. Well, we the launch the launching pad is from doing this this uh, short film, and then we're accepting submissions up to uh, May 8th, Okay. but they could also come to our film festival because yes. uh, we take, we're currently doing the short film festival, which is films under 30 minutes. Oh, okay. And so then that, that way they could come and, you know, continue on. Continue on. Yeah, our yeah. event will be in June 2022, but uh, we want to establish our base by supporting the 40 hour film project and making sure everyone's aware to continue on. You know, There's a lot of talent here, but we got to create more opportunities, so this is where the beginning is. Yeah, and, you know, the, our, the 2022 48 is going to be around July this okay. year. Um, you know, we, we, I try to find it a time where everybody's not too slammed, gotcha. you know, because yeah. they need to dedicate a whole weekend to doing this. And so, you know, some people do right. it super early, but I find, you know, because we get a lot of students, you know, we actually have one team that's competed multiple years, and it's a family. Nice. It's a dad and all of his kids, oh. and they get together and they make a film. And they won; they, they did well in the special effects and use. We also give awards for best use of line, nice. best nice. use of the prop, best use of <laughs> character. Yeah. And so, like this year, I'm trying to remember what the prop was. It was a melon, which is kind of hard to work into a serious film. <laughs> yeah, you know. But yeah. they, there was, and and then the one of the top films this year was called A Melon Before Dying. Oh, wow. And it was their genre that they were assigned was noir. <laughs> and and we, I was thinking, yeah. how are they gonna pull this off? Yeah. And they did such a great job. They had a, a lady on stage singing with the black and white and, and the old Sure style microphone, but they didn't have one, so they made it out of foam. And it looked good on camera, you know, that's all that really <laughs> yeah, matters. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just that creativity of, they get these crazy topics and then they have to come up and use the line, use the prop, and use the character. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, it's just really you're amazing giving, to see how much... You're giving folks a spark when also an audience to get the feedback. So that's great. Yes. Imagination. Yeah, we had that same uh, conclusion after with the COVID coming out, you know, June and yours is in July. And sometimes we might shift to July also, but we have to do what's best, the best weather, the best environment, exactly. to everyone, yeah. because we want to hit with a splash. We want to come out strong. So you're in the same, we're all fashioning the same problems because we're not going to quit. We've got to continue forward. Yeah, we can't do ours in February when it may rain all That's week. Right. That's that right. kind of is a buzzkill right. for just about every film. That's right. We're giving an No exterior so shots yeah. this year. That's right. You know? That's right. <laughs> everyone be ready. We're going to be around the summertime, so be, because just it's cold and like, gray. Fortunately, we're a resilient bunch here in San Antonio, and we can handle that July heat, yeah. but it's hard to shoot in the rain on a on a, uh, a winging it kind of project, you know. What was the time period for the last one? When you oh, it was it? in July. It was in July. Yeah. Okay. Is it always consistent every July? It's, I, I get to set the date okay. um, when it works for me and, and yeah. when I think it'll be a good time and we can get the most signups. You know, but like like I said, you know, we have families that do it. We ha in some, there's we have categories for best animation, best you know actor, best actress, cool. best director, best yeah. sound. Have you modified anything from uh, the last I, few years? I, I cannot. Okay. Oh, it is a standardized competition. Okay. So that everybody in the United States is playing by the same rules. Yeah, it's not everybody's on the same page. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how. That's, that's right, why yeah. they're able to go to con is because if it makes it through the gauntlet, then it everybody's been on the same playing field. In fact. We are set that 
I cannot release them to go make their film till a certain time. Okay. And if they are one minute late on their submission, they're no longer disqualified. In. So they're disqualified. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. I tell Iron them, rules. well, it, no, it has to be <laughs> wow. for it to be a valid international yes. competition. And so that way everybody's playing by the same rules. Everybody's got the same Fair prop. Play. Everybody's Fair got play. the same character all over the world. And, and what's what, what I tell people in the kickoff meeting, and I said, look, you know, y'all, you guys are all creatives. But the business side of the creative, the business side of the film is just as important because if you don't do that, your film will never see the light of day. So, yeah. you know, they, the teams will have to have somebody getting releases signed. Yes. We have to have all, if they, they, if they don't have their paperwork in, they disqualify. You know, that's really important because for, uh, you know, people that are getting into this business, uh, that's one of the things that I teach is, you know, um, it's good to be creative but in order to make it in this industry, you have to have a business side too. You have to have your business business brain and you have to have your creative brain. Is it a hobby or is it, is a, it career? a hobby or career? Right. And if it's a career, you've yeah. got to dot your I's yeah. and cross your right. T's. Yeah. Right, not everyone has access yeah. to an entertainment attorney. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they must protect their property, their, right. you know, their arts, and they must learn. So this is a good way to begin. I mean, Especially even music releases. Yes, so they, copyrighted music. It, you know, yeah. if somebody submits right. a film that has copyrighted music in it, sorry, yeah. you didn't make the cut. So we actually mm -hmm. have multiple teams that do original music in that oh, 48. Wow. So they get wow. a songwriter yeah. that is up, that's on their team and as soon as they get their script written, that songwriter goes to work recording their tracks and doing a song and- yeah. That's almost two teams, the film team oh. and then the music or the soundtrack. I believe in film, filmmaking, the best films have the great soundtracks because after you leave the movie, you're still thinking about the music. So that's good that you're beginning Star to Wars is a prime example. How many little kids ran out of the theater? You know, dun 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 yeah, dun, 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 dun yeah. Just jumping along. Lost Ark, Did Lantern. I just do Raiders yeah. of the Lost Ark? No, that was uh, okay. Dun, dun, dun. It, was, it was close. <laughs> it was, it was, they're all the same. It was a tough crowd. John, yeah, he, I'm a big John. Draw. Yeah. Did I do Raiders of the Lost Ark? Hey, dun dun dun. It was, yeah. uh, but he was almost a Darth Vader's march. Darth Vader's march and Indiana Jones. That was yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Raiders Lost Raiders of the Lost Ark was dun 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 dun. So I was right. That was Star Wars. We got to contribute a little John. Williams there with some go. acapella vocal John Williams well, tributes. Well, we hope you discover yeah. a new John Williams out of the 40 Hour Film Project. There's yeah, got to be someone that's who has right. this opportunity yeah. and they can begin. And you know, that's a that's a cool thing because not only are you doing, you, you've got little uh, facets and all these things. You know, I always tell my crew and actors that it takes all parts to make a working brain. It does. And so you mentioned, you know, you've got uh, somebody uh, that's, or they're all coming together to, to create this story. Then you've got you know the actors who's going to be acting, who's going to be the crew members, and then you've got the music. Then you've got the person that makes sure all the um, eyes are dotted and the T's are crossed. And so you got you you know they're learning a crash course in filmmaking yeah. all together. Let me ask you another question. Sure. Um, you know, like for me and David, we um, we were uh, marketing uh, the uh, Alamo City, and. Uh, we had a lot of interesting people coming from all parts of the world, okay. all parts of the states. And uh, I was, uh, what about you? I mean, is, is everybody here in San Antonio, do they come from different places? Outside the county, yeah, else? They, <laughs> Yes, uh, people yeah. come from you know the South Texas region. In fact, the filmmakers that won this year, um, they did a film called She's a Good Girl and it's uh, uh, a team out of Austin okay. because you know, people that love to make film, love to make film. Yeah, and they want to continue to hone their craft and, right, and, yeah. and they look for any opportunity they can. And so we do see that compete in Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, you know, cause they, they just want to make film. Right. Now it may not be the exact same team, but maybe the director is doing a film in each one or uh, uh, somebody that's an actress or an actor, they come in and they'll say, look, I'm going to get a team in all these cities. I just want to, you know, have more portfolio material and become better at what I do. Yeah. And the best way to get better is to do it. Just do it. You know, so many people suffer from paralysis yeah. by analysis. <laughs> yeah. You know, they talk yeah. about their film, they talk about the book they're going to write, the album they're going to cut, sure. and they never do it. They right. never finish the, pro they never start it. Most of them just talk about it. And so that's what really, you know, throwing people into this 48 hour pressure cooker, it just, yeah. you got to do it. And, and you, you don't even think about it once you're in, you're just like, you're just laser focused on the, the finish line right. of 6.30, p.m. on Sunday night that that film is in my hand 
right or yeah. uploaded you know gotcha. now they're able to upload it so you know as long as the timestamp you know, it's kind of cool because I was wondering if anybody would try to cheat or try to upload their stuff late. And so, you know, I got a lot of messages from people like, look, I started uploading my film and it the upload crashed. Oh, Can wow. I re-upload it? And the guys in the International 48, uh, the designers, they actually set up a system. So if I have a file, you know, they can analyze that file to make sure it's the same file because they don't want to punish anybody because yeah, the internet yeah. went down. Well, be a but place but like, I guess it's a checksum or something like that. Yeah. So if I start my upload at, you know, 30 minutes early and we're almost finished and it crashes, you know, I can go wow. re-upload it and it still has the timestamp from the original upload. But if you made any changes to the file, even if you changed the name, added a period nice. in the name, mm -hmm. you were disqualified. Wow. Must be so wow. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gotta be that you have to be uploading that file yeah. and it knows it. And so that's what I thought was that's amazing great. because I was like, How, what happens? You know, I was calling the head guy. I'm like, hey, you know, we've got people. Yeah. He goes, look, we track it as long as they haven't modified. If it is literally the same file, it will upload so, and it will automatically show up as qualified because excellent. the system says, you know, eligible or ineligible. Yes, yes. And so when the it analytics, finishes uploading, right. it's uh, it's telling me these are the eligible films, these are the ineligible films. And one of the things that I loved about the 48 this year yes, was that we had zero teams that did not finish. Wow, wow, that's, wow, that's I mean, because usually yeah, you get like. 20% that are like, oh, a render, we didn't plan enough time for rendering. Yeah, that's that's successful right there. Because well, they're uh, getting a little sharper. Know, they always... now know the concrete rules and they have to meet them. Yeah. I did give them a lecture on rendering during the Good. kickoff. <laughs> I was like, yeah. if you think your film's gonna take an hour to render, you need to give it to, yeah. you know, because guess what? You may have to stop the render for something and if you don't give it enough time, you are not gonna complete this project. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, you know, but that's that's what's great about this project. It's so unique and it is a pressure cooker and people yes. don't sleep for a weekend and then they go into hibernation <laughs> yeah. on Monday. Yeah, I've heard about some crews just shooting continuously, you know, just continuously and, and acting. You know, I've, I've talked to some of the people uh, in Austin you know, uh, and it's amazing what they can do. Uh, David, I wanted to ask you, um, tell me about the, uh, this coming year, this coming year, what are some of the changes that we've, we've done? Uh, I mean, I know we've, we've kind of tweaked out the date a little bit more so that yes. way that we could get more submissions. That yes. was one of the things. That was the only manageable yeah. part as we yeah. come through with the uh, post COVID results and, and dealing yeah. with everyone, uh, getting our new location. Uh, we might change and shift the date, but everyone will be willing to follow it as long as they are aware of us. They'll know, no, no, and then when yeah. the time comes, it'll hit. Uh, but so these submissions, we're still taking submissions, and we're getting folks. It's our primarily it's a short film festival, under 30 minutes. Uh, that is the, the area that we're into. Right. But it's uh, the name's developing. You know, starting in 2010, we've been on and off and on. But then, right late with the COVID, some festivals didn't continue, but we will. But we, yeah, we, and uh, we, we have to. Was, you have yeah. to survive. It might be a smaller scale, but the party will still be great. It'll still be that nice VIP party where everyone can connect and collaborate. And yeah. that is how other people interact and meet. It's like uh, many actors want to meet these directors, and we will still have that great party. But everything is smooth sailing under uh, Francois's uh, festival direction. Uh, but now we're so guiding, we and we have decided to include everyone who is a part of San Antonio filmmaking. We're supporting them as a part of the Alamo City Film Society. We're going to expand. And we still have it on Facebook, but we're going to make a new website along with the festival uh, website. But we want to do things in a professional manner under a new scheme. So everything's good. But with Philip, yeah. with all his years of production experience, well, we're now traveler and ex experienced production man. He is leading the new Alamo City of San Antonio with his 40-hour film project, and we're here to support him. Yeah. I would not say I'm leading anything. I am continuing what other people sure. have done and you know but you are a new focal point because uh, this 40-hour film project with your experience how long were you in production how many years uh, uh, like 30. okay 30 years i think that's more than anyone yeah, else we have sitting in San Antonio. probably today. more than most of the people in this room have and been alive that's why so that's why we need yeah. a flagship and he is part of the 40-hour film project and we want to support him and see good things and we'll help everyone along the way yeah that's the new Alamo city film society and i just want to say thank you so much for this cool place that you have here, Nel Nelco Comics, which is on Floor Street. It's absolutely fantastic, man. I, I walked in, I was just thinking of just doing this podcast, but then I ended up buying stuff. So I'm oh. just, it's just fantastic inventory you have here. 
So if you guys are into comic books or uh, paraphernalia in that area, uh, you gotta touch base with uh, Nelco Comics here with Quick Philip. question, why did the comics, how did this become part of your life? Yeah, that's well, a, <coughs> yeah. This is a weird person. story. Please. When I, was 15, when, when I was 15 years old, I went to my dad and borrowed $5,000 and started a comic book store in the local mall in North Louisiana. So I was a ninth grader and I went to the mall, negotiated a special deal on rent, and I made a <laughs> lot of money as a eight, uh, you know, right. 15 to 18 year old kid because that was in the 80s. I was selling a ton of comics, and by the time I was, uh, I think uh, I had only had it for two years because this lady comes in and makes me an offer to buy the comic sure. shop, and and I made a lot of money, and that's actually what funded me getting into video because yes. I sold the comic shop. My brother and I ran it and bought a Corvette with cash, yeah. which was not right. a bad, I, I mean, go, I was the only kid at high school driving around in a vet yeah. that I paid for what myself. Was that it was an 87 awesome. white vet with awesome. gray leather interior, awesome. and it was awesome. I didn't get a lot of tickets, which was great. <laughs> wow. But but what was cool though, is I all the profits that I made from selling the comic shop except for buying the Corvette, I bought video equipment I see. and started a production company. So when I was still in high school, wow. I started a production company yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, in, in the late, the early nineties, you know, I started, I, I, I was nominated for an SB and nice. all kinds of stuff yes. before I was even 22, oh, that's great. Oh, you know, wow. I shot some famous footage called the mascot fight. These, wow. The Indian and the demon from these two colleges wow. got into a fight on the field. So I, 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 you know, I so it was crazy. And so I did all this and I produced a high school football show that aired on Fox before I was 22. And, and so that's how, but if it weren't for comic books, I wouldn't be in television. Yeah. And, yeah. and so once my, my company Nelco Media, which, you know, I'm a complete line extension, you know, person. <laughs> Nelco Media, Nelco right, Comics, right. Nelco, right. Yeah. you know, like buses. No, I'm kidding. I don't <laughs> well, have buses well, you have yet. a professional operation. I said, this is not a hobbyist yeah. comic shop. This is someone who has been. It's hardcore, yeah, right. but it's, yeah. the, the concept here, it's a speakeasy. Seller. There is no sign. If you don't know me, you don't come in. Yeah. You know, if yeah. it, I have people will text me and say, hey, I'd like to look at some comic books and I will meet them here, but this is not open to the general public. So if you follow me on social media or you happen to have my cell phone number and you want to see it, you can call me. But you know, I, I, I just, I'm just a geek and I love comic books. I mean, the comic books, the thing about comic books for me is if you look at in films today, yes. the highest grossing films are based on stories that were created in the comics. Yeah, that's and pretty much, that's pretty true. much, yeah, I've seen that. And you know, that's a good and a bad thing, but there's also a lot of indie comics that are coming, turning into TV shows yeah. and you know, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon are looking to these obscure, like the Umbrella Academy. You know, I don't know if you've seen that show. Uh, yeah. You know, you've got The Boys, mm -hmm. which is pretty raunchy, but that's straight from a comic book. Um, yeah. You know, DC released that first, and because it was so raunchy and anti-superhero, DC's like, never mind, you, you can go somewhere else. And, and, you know, you've got all these shows, you know, Blade, and the list goes on and on with com things that are foundation in these comic books. Because if you look at a comic book and you're a filmmaker, yes. I'm surprised every filmmaker doesn't read comic books. And here's yeah. why. You're, you know, what is a storyboard? It's, it's, it's a comic script comic. with some pictures to give you an idea. Exactly. And so, you know, in a way, like I have an idea that I won't bore you with, but I have a horror film that's pretty extreme. And I'm gonna make a comic book first, Friends. and that'll be uh, that'll be my That's storyboard your for the play, film. Right there, yeah. you write Once the you script, write it, yeah. and then you also can test it in, without rolling. Exactly. You know, I wasn't gonna say rolling film, but it's rolling electricity and memory cards <laughs> these days. <laughs> But you know that's the idea is is make this and if it gets if it resonates with people then you also have a foundation of fans that are your street team right. to help you build it you fund it on Indiegogo you have a fan base you, then you you know get a deal and yeah. who knows yeah that's, that's why I'm a comic geek yeah, because yeah. every every book in this store is a potential TV show sure, or movie that's right I, I was in, and experience right I was here. in the same mindset I started out in comic books and then. Uh, you know, later on, I, I, I think I took a drama class, um, and then I did theater in college just for electives, just to get through it. And Because uh, you didn't I, want to take an I, extra math? I didn't want to no. take an extra <laughs> math, man. And then uh, everybody around me was saying, I'm going to uh, L.A., I'm going to New York. I'm, and then they, <clears throat> they asked me, 
well, what are you gonna do, man? And I said, well, it's not gonna be this. Oh, <laughs> seriously? Yeah, and this is all I do now. So. <coughs> famous last words. Yeah, famous last words. Uh, but, That's awesome. Well, I enjoy but, comics too. Yeah. And uh, we're almost there to wrap. Yeah, we're, we're almost there. Well, listen, everybody, we just wanna say thank you for checking us out, listening to us. We wanna promote the Alamo City Film Festival 2022. We're taking submissions still right now. It's going on till May 8th. And then May 8th, that's the cutoff point, and then we'll start doing a pre-selection. But the event is uh, June 11th, 2022. Uh, location to be announced, but uh, I'll let you, Philip, talk about do the closing. When, yeah, do the closing, when, when the 48 hour, when's that gonna happen? And when's it, the final it, it, If you would like to, comp to participate, it is a competition, but it's really the participation is, is important. Yeah. You can just look us up on Facebook at 48 Hour Film Project San Antonio. You can also go to the website 48 Hour Film Project. And what's cool is if you don't have a team, there's even places, to, uh, there's forums where you can try to build your own team. And nice. so you, even if you're a lone wolf and you do your own thing and you want to be part of a team, you're an actor, or actress, writer, songwriter, whatever, we will help you put a team. We're not going to build your team for you, but it makes, we, we do a lot of events where we bring people that are interested to come in. And then if you meet the right people, you build your team. So 48 Hour Film Project is the website. You can also follow us on Facebook and attend any of our events that are here in San Antonio. And just bottom line, come network with the film community and creative, interesting yes. people. And let's all build each other up and make San Antonio I was gonna say make San Antonio great again, but it's already great. <laughs> well, Sorry, I can't. It's okay for all. Opportunity for all. For all. Yeah. Independence and yeah, teams. So. Opportunity for all. That's so saga. Yeah. Saga. Saga. Yeah. Experience. Entrepreneur. Saga. <laughs> I'm easily amused. Uh, and I apologize to all of your listeners for that little. Yeah, oh, it's great. Thank you everyone yeah. for coming to Nelco Comics. Yes. And meeting the wonderful. Thank you so much. Find us on Facebook, both of us. Uh, a 48 hour film project and the Alamo City. Uh, Film Festival 2022. David Yanis, Donnelly Film Society. Thanks for being here, yeah. everyone. Taking a look. We'll see you soon. See you later. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.